Welcome to episode 192 of Sports Geek. On this week's episode, I chat with David Fowler about his career at FIFA and his new challenge at My Cujo. Welcome to Sports Geek, the podcast built for sports digital and sports business professionals. And now, here's your host who is currently catching up on Sports Biz Slack messages, Sean Callanan. Thanks, DJ Joel. Yes, my name is Sean Callanan, and yes, I do check the Sports Biz Slack messages because that's where I start having conversations with today's guest, David Fowler, who was formerly at FIFA, had a long career at FIFA, and we've been going backwards and forwards, and he's a well-known blogger in the space, davidgfowler.wordpress.com. Um, that's how we got connected uh, to, to, tee up this, uh, to tee up this interview. So uh, if you're not on the Sports Biz Slack channels, uh, please please join up. Go to sportsgeekhq.com slash slack. Um, and if I could do one more thing, if you've left a podcast review, um, I'd much... I would very much like to say thank you. We're now at 124 reviews on iTunes. Um, I'm going to try to... I want to hit 200 reviews before we hit episode 200. Is that asking too much? If you have left one, I know how hard it is. It's quite painful. Uh, If you go to sportsgeekhq.com slash iTunes, it should drive you to the right place. Uh, Just leave a quick sentence. Tell us what you learnt, uh, how long you've been listening for, something along those lines. It's very much appreciated. Uh, I want to really jump in uh, to this conversation with David Fowler. Um, as I said, long-time Twitter friend, uh, back, going backwards and forwards on all things sports biz, um, been a long-time reader of his blog, um, sharing insights on sports marketing and uh, technology and where, where sport and uh, how it's being marketed is changing, um, and he does that. Uh, it, with his with the lens of uh, his roles at at FIFA in commercial and strategic marketing, and then head of brand at FIFA. So we sort of bounce around a few different things, and then we start talking about his new role at My Cujo TV, um, which is very interesting from a from a football point of view, and offers a a really uh, a good product to to not only grassroots sports, uh, grassroots football, um, but also leagues as they're coming up. So. It's enough another different play, and it's obviously talking about what Dave is really passionate about, the changes in sports technology and, and OTT in particular. So I hope you enjoy my chat with David Fowler. Very happy uh, to connect with this man. We've known each other for a long time via the internet. I know him as David G. Fowler uh, on on Twitter because that's how I've met him. Um, he has been at FIFA for the last 15 years and now is the marketing director at My Cujo. Uh, David Fowler, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sean. Great to be here. Uh, we were just talking off air. Um, if people haven't yet changed the the speed setting for Sports Geek, they might want to do it for this one. We've got an Australian and a Scotsman, so I think if they're on double speed, it'll be really tough. I'm going to speak very slowly, Sean, just to make sure that I'm understood. I, I often get that uh, feedback from people, so I'm going to try my best. You and me both, uh, Australians, notoriously, I, I find it funny when people say they listen to me at double speed because I naturally talk fast, so... Kudos to those people. Uh, there is studies that say if you're one of the fast listeners that you listen more intently. So hopefully people are doing that. Um, it's good to catch up. Like I said, uh, we've known each other via the internet, uh, backwards and forwards. Uh, your blog, uh, uh, your WordPress blog is one that I read and, and, and tweet out, uh, David G. Fowler at WordPress.com, uh, with your thoughts on sports marketing. So to get things started, take us back. Uh, where did your where did your career where did your career start? How did you find yourself in this space? I started actually. I think the biggest change for me um, was taking a decision and to to do the the CIES FIFA Master degree course in, in, in sports management. I took that decision back in two thousand and four. I had been working in London for a few years as part of a sponsorship agency. Yep, and decided to to try and opened my eyes to what else existed out in the sports domain and, and at that point I took the decision to do that course uh, which took me on a, a very, very interesting journey. Um, most interesting because I met a great bunch of, of very curious uh, fellow passionate sports industry 
um, but not not at that point, but soon to be sports industry professionals. And that took me really took me into FIFA. I met through that course. I met several people at, at FIFA uh, on field visits and, and doing various projects, and uh, was was uh, kindly accepted um, through the, an interview process at FIFA. Uh, uh, by, by them and then that actually started a 12 year journey where I, I uh, went through the ranks at FIFA and, and, and on the commercial side from, from sponsorship to research and comms brand and laterally uh, commercial, commercial and brand strategy as, as the head of strategy and intelligence so it was a great journey so I mean, yeah. So it, it is like, and in you know, in internet years, they like they they go faster than than dog years. So we're talking like two thousand and five is when you started at FIFA in multiple roles around marketing and and commercial. Um, and you know, FIFA is this massive global organization, and you're in that you're you're working in that space as the world of digital. And TV rights and the whole landscape starts to change. What was it like being in a big organisation that, you know, had, you know, the methods that it did and it did very well, uh, you know, the traditional TV deals and signage and all of those things that that uh, are traditional sports marketing and, and how the landscape started to change with digital and social. What was it like, you know, inside the beast that is FIFA? Yeah, um, it certainly is a beast. Um, the... the there, there was, there was a, a real appetite. There is a real appetite of FIFA to be a leader in in, in the digital space, and that's uh, I think that's something that we will see um, in the coming years bear bear fruit. Um, inev- inevitably, FIFA and, and many big sports organisations are, in some ways, in my, in my view, victims of of their own success. Um, the the, the old days of, of media-driven uh, sponsorship deals where uh, FIFA was very successful in the, in the kind of early 2000s, bringing in big brands uh, and, and indeed convinced um, many big brands to, to, to sort of stay with them for, for longer-term uh, durations. And, and, and that's somehow that comfort zone somehow uh, may, may have played its part in, in let's say, a lack of real appetite to, to evolve and, and, and innovate. And this is obviously not, not only a, a problem at, at an organisation like FIFA, but I think it's a very common problem across but it the- is it is on that uh, at that major event scale. I think, you know, FIFA with the World Cup, with the, the Olympics, you know, having the four-year cycles, you, you're not in the same position that the – that the leagues that are still big but they can be more nimble because they've got this year-on-year, week-on-week – uh, you know, test and learn, try new things, but it's it's just a different scale when you get to that. Uh, you know, FIFA Olympics that you ha- it's it's really hard to say what is what's the next four years going to be like when you look at the rate of change that's coming through every single year. And we always, you know, we've discussed previously that that the lawyers and the and the rights holders and all of that are trying to catch up with the technology, and we're and you're constantly playing catch up. Uh, no, I think you're spot on, Sean, because uh, that, that's something. That, it, maybe it's not so so related to size that this this challenge of, of, of innovation. But you look at a, a, an organisation like UEFA who, who have created this magnificent property called the Champions League, and and, yep. and that's actually their source of of innovation and and change, and and that that almost drives the organisation forward to 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 experiment and and reach new heights and, and yeah you're, you're absolutely right I think I think the problem is maybe less less the, the size although that plays a factor it's it's actually this idea that, that in some cases organizations like FIFA and maybe the IOC they don't have the benefit of of regular uh day week in week out yep. competition so so then when you get to your you know your last role uh, at FIFA and sort of that forward-looking role of strategy intelligence how do you put that lens over, I guess, that landscape in that you do have those two, three-week windows where you do have the world's attention and it is the whole world's attention but it is, it is that shorter, uh, shorter time span. How do you try to put that, here's the things we're trying to do in that shorter space? Yeah, I think a lot of what kept us up at night was trying to actually expand the window um, 
yep. through which our broadcast partners and our sponsors could activate. And, and this this is really the challenge. And I, and I think now for for FIFA, the, the the new FIFA, the challenge is now to to bring in um, new properties uh, to innovate and, and explore uh, a, a 24-7, 365 approach. Uh, which has been talked about a lot by a lot of organisations and in, in, in this kind of position with, with one marquee competition happening yep. every four years. Um, that This will be the key to, to, to the next phase, I think, of, of, of uh, development for, for FIFA, certainly, and, and finding that, uh, that formula has, has been, a, has been a, a, long, a long search. But I do believe that with, with some of the new initiatives that have been talked about quite publicly already and, and being discussed uh, from women's football to, to elite club football, um, youth competitions and uh, m- many other initiatives. I, I think there's there's definitely a, a chance for FIFA to to kind of enter that uh, that week-in, week-out domain. Yeah, I mean that, that year-round, uh, I guess, cycle of uh, not just being a winter sport and not just being a summer sport, it's – you know, it's what we're seeing the NFL trying to do in the in the US, and the NBA is trying to do the same, putting different properties in its off season to extend the life cycle. It just comes down to content, and FIFA does not lack for content. It's just a matter of how it gets framed and how it gets pitched into the different markets, so you can engage people twelve months because it is the appetite's there. It's just a matter of how it gets framed uh, for your fans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think it's all about knowing who, you, who your fans are. It, it sounds a little bit oversimplistic, but um, with, with the, the, the best examples of, of um, content marketing that you see in the world of sports, that they, they come from organizations that, that clearly have done the legwork in understanding who their fans are. And, and I, can't, I can't overstate the importance of of spending time to to do proper um segmentation work and understand who you you precisely want to target i think there's a in in, in the sports business i've found some some reluctance um when you're dealing with uh competitions that have history and heritage I've, I've, i've kind of witnessed some reluctance for people to from people to leave certain groups behind and, and by that i mean to, to make a conscious decision that you're not going to to cater specifically for for certain target groups and this is not to say you don't want you know everybody to be interested in what you're doing and you don't want everybody to be engaging with your content that's yeah. more to say that you want to build your content and you want to build your your, your core interest around certain groups to make sure that, that there's a there's a, a good fit between what you're doing what you're putting out there and what they're consuming um, and that's something that uh, yeah, it has been a bit of a battle um, in my in my my experience. I mean, it is something that we're seeing, uh, like the clubs tackle and that whole yes, here's our traditional core. They're the they're rusted on. They're always following our team, and but we've got to do other things to bring on a new generation that you know bring in that younger fan, um, and well as attract a completely new fan. Um, and that and sometimes a lot of the time those two groups. Are almost opposite. Like one, you know, one group hates the content that's going out to the other group, and so it be, becomes a challenge. But it's, it's, it seems to be, to me at least, to be a little bit easier at club level because you've got that passion for for the jersey or for the team, or for the logo or the crest, whatever it is. How do you how do you start getting that that getting that data to bubble up at that global scale of of FIFA to say you know what what is a football fan you know, globally or in particular regions, how do you get that point? Because people people don't love FIFA. They love their team and they love their country. So how do you, how do you get that layer of data and that information um, at that global scale? Yeah, no, that's a really good question, Sean. I 100% agree with that statement. I mean, I think uh, um, I'm sure most sports organisations are, are, are not under any illusions that or the, 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 the sports organisation governing bodies yep. uh, Particularly, are not under any illusions that they are not the ones that, that the fans are, are, are passionate about, and, and that's that's key a key um, piece of uh, insight to accept before you you start uh, the, the process of positioning yourself. And I think, and to answer your question, um, for, for for FIFA and for others in, in FIFA's position, it's it's more about uh, an aggregation of 
of across different um, different teams. You're trying to obviously position the, the 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 event and the history of the event, the heritage of the event, yep. and, and the the uh, the prestige of, of of an event such as uh, as, as the World Cup. Um, and I think what the the direction that FIFA is going in now is very much um, very much around uh, in, in that direction and uh, trying to to really bring out the stories of of the, the the history of the World Cup uh, to a, to a new audience. There's some great initiatives that the, the the comms and marketing guys are doing at the moment to to do a sort of uh, relive old uh, historic matches of the World Cup through uh, broadcasting on, yep. on Facebook uh, of of uh, iconic matches and everything around the match is recreated uh, for today's um, fans. So. Tweeting about uh, the the pre-match um, build-up, um, players being selected, uh, injuries, whatever was happening back then, but in a kind of modern-day context, that uh, these kind of ideas are, are pretty cool and, and, and help to to sort of engage and bring a new generation into the in, into the property and in, and into into content and content types that that are shareable. So if it is a a father sharing with a son or a nephew or you know a, a you know a mother remembering her her, you know, her grandfather talking about that game and then sharing it with her daughter like that's that's what i mean like there's, there's so much content there it's just a matter of how does it get framed where does you know where does the ott sit in this you know on demand i want to watch it now um that's the piece that's exciting to find out how you know who really and how that whole archive gets unlocked uh, from a from a digital point of view, because broadcast can only do so much, um, but we get, we've got so much archival, great great stories, great history, you know, that's sitting there. How is it going to be? How is it going to be unlocked? Um, is is a challenge for when you've got that big archive of uh, material. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would I would emphasize again, um, you can get lost unless you really are, are laser targeted. Yep. Uh, who you're trying to, to, to cater for, and, and um, the, the beast that, that, that FIFA FIFA is, you, you kind of the temptation is to go for the world. Um, yep. That that will never work. So I wanted to I wanted to ask you, I think because I do believe that I, we cross paths via your blog. What triggered you to start uh, to start to blog, and I guess scratch that itch to talk about you know where sports and business and technology and where they're all fitting, what uh, what made you start uh, being a blogger? It's a question I'd love to ask you one day, Sean, maybe maybe when you have... Uh... <laughs> you can always ask, <laughs> this is a two-way conversation, so I'll, I'll ask any question you Do ask you of first? me. <laughs> Do you want to go first? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy to go first. I, I, started, I started blogging to tell people uh, what the opportunity was in the digital space and it was a little bit of a bit of a brand build um, and and you know telling people hey look at this what's happening in all these places I think if what I did find is I'm a better I'm a better podcaster than I'm a blogger and so I've retired the blogging part of what I do I don't write that much um, and I and I and I talk now I'm going to go write a book so I've got to figure out a way to do that but I'm going to do it via talking um, but that's pretty much where it was for me I was one looking for content um on this on the space that i was talking about and there were there was pretty light on i mean in the time that i started doing it um and so it was part of well i had to tell people uh hey you need a sports geek or you need a sports digital person to understand the intersection of what's happening in the social and digital space and how they can interact with your fans and you know we've seen an industry built out that are now serving that uh part so that's why i that's why i started um and you know, I, I was obviously starting at building out bus- uh, Sports Geek as a business and all of those kinds of things. So it was a business build. Um, but for you doing it, and I, th- you know, while while you were at you know at FIFA, um, that's pretty much where the I guess the, where the question came from me of is was it just something you wanted to share, connect those kind of things uh, that got you started? Yeah, I th- yeah, I think similar, actually similar, uh, similar reasons. To you, Sean, many of many of your points there ring true for me. I I also wanted to um, explore a little bit, uh, having having a curious mind, what what the next uh, stage in my career could be. I wanted yep. to sort of explore topics that that really interested me, and and, and that that I think 
if uh, if I was to recommend blogging for any one reason to anybody, I, I would I would I would cite that reason that it really does. It's a great way to educate yourself and, and, and to help you understand what topics really interest and fascinate you. And and, and that that was the biggest um, added value for me as part of this blogging process. Uh, obviously connecting with guys like yourself and people all around the world who slowly um, I, I met another another uh, listener and, and I think I don't know previous guest Baz Sato was a previous guest on your podcast oh, I know Baz no, I haven't, but, I, but he came to one of our meetups and we did not yes I know Baz uh, uh, Baz from uh, um, what's AZ the team's Altmar. name he's at AZ AZ Altmar that's yeah. right yeah yeah so uh, He's a, good, a great example, like yourself, of somebody who I just got connected with through shared interests and eventually met him now working in Amsterdam. He's Dutch. He's based in Amsterdam. Yep. Uh, nearby. Anyway, uh, we met face-to-face for the first time So uh, last week. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's been a great journey in that respect to, to, to connect with people all over the world, to share ideas, to exchange. Uh, I would highly recommend that I, I didn't really have much time for – to put out the, the level of content I wanted to, and, and, yep. and, I, and I struggle having moved having, having moved into a new position, which largely was driven. Uh, I mean, my, my the new role, which I guess we will talk about, is, yep. is a sports sports tech environment, sports tech role, um, and that was really my ambition, and, and that also was, you know, a, a, a nice um, offshoot of of the blog uh, yep. that this role really came about from my my. Uh, um, explorations and, and content that I was putting out around the blog. And I think it's, I mean, I think I think it's really good advice and it's advice that I won't give now when I'm talking to people who are either in, in roles in sports or people who want to get into sports or even in my previous life as a geek, um, I'd, I'd employed this as, and I'd, it's a tactic if you want to call it, uh, um, but it's a really good career one if you want to, you know, if someone wants, you can always send someone your CV but if there is a a weight of articles uh, that are there or of of your opinion, um, like it's far more compelling uh, than any CV. And then I, I agree with you the the ability to make connections with the Baz of the world or the you know the JW Cannons or or those kind of people because they're you're connected. Your you know sports biz Twitter uh, Twitter is a really small world. Like there's not that many people, and so. Uh, being able to put some content into that space, you get known and you really don't know what the opportunity will be. And so, you know, I'm always, you know, I like the approach that you took of, you know, it's not like, hey, I'm doing uh, this blog because I want to get a job down the track. It's like I'm doing this blog because I want to share my thoughts and connect with people and I'm really open to whatever opportunities there are. Um, I think that's a really good way of going about it. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good experience. But sadly, I don't have so much time uh, at the current <laughs> in the current months. But uh, yeah, um, hopefully. Oh I can- no, I can I completely understand. I can completely understand that. Like when people say, you know, how 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 long you do the podcast? I'm like, when I talk to them, and then I do an intro, and then I go back to work. Uh, so you know, I'm not I'm not just doing an hour a week uh, to get the podcast out. Um, you did mention uh, there that uh, you finished up at FIFA, so it was 12, 12 years. At FIFA, that's right. Yeah, twelve years. So three world did three World Cups, or did you get? Uh... I did. Yes. So I was just short of Russia, which was a, was a. Uh, I think I feel slightly uh, slightly sad about not not experiencing this uh, this cycle right to the end, having having spent so much of my time preparing for Russia. But yeah, three three World Cups, three and a half. Can we call that's, it? That's still a, that's a pretty good stint uh, uh, to be involved with three World Cups, and now you are. Marketing director of My Cujo, tell us what tell us what My Cujo is and what excited you about the role to uh, to come on board. Certainly, yeah. So My Cujo is, is a football streaming platform, um, principally for for long tail content rights holders. So we we serve uh, the the long tail of, of of football, targeting anybody from local clubs, leagues. Uh, up to the top end of that market, which you would consider uh, potentially a, a, a football confederation that has youth, women's, or yep. uh, and a futsal beach competition that is, does not yep. have a mainstream broadcast market. 
Um, what excited me about uh, my Kuju, um, there is a long list. I would say hovering somewhere somewhere high on that list would be would be the three letters OTT. Um, yep. I think it's a, a, I having going back to the blog, um, the the excitement and buzz around this topic has been immense um, in the sports business. And although it's maybe easy to say those three letters and more difficult to explain what they actually mean, um, the the streaming business was one that, that I was so curious about and one that I was so uh, determined to, to, to get my head around, given that much of the sports business is pivoting to towards this this area. Um, so I, I think the, the the company itself, Mike Uju, is, a, is, a, is already quite well established. So I think while we still consider ourselves uh, a kind of nimble startup in many ways, we're yep. we already 37 people. We have many uh, a network of, of uh, people around the world. Most of us are based in, in Amsterdam. Um, and so, and so, how does uh, so is at the moment you're in the are you in acquisition mode? Whether it be grassroots uh, competitions or state league competitions or or smaller federation uh, games, futsal, like you're, you're pretty much getting the whole spectrum of if you've got open digital rights, how do, how do they how do they connect to the platform? What's the you know, what's what what would be the steps? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Sean. We, we are in acquisition mode. Um, we, we're already a, a global platform, well represented um, in, in most major countries around the world. Uh, we're possibly best um, known in Brazil, Portugal, and, and, and parts of Asia, where we have high-end, long-tail um, content. In, in those markets, there's a couple of other markets, Denmark and a few others, where we're, we're um, we're well well represented. Yep. Uh, if uh, and we are, we are relevant. If you're if you're a football club league um, competition of any kind, then I would I would I would I would say take a look at the platform. Mykuju TV is our, our URL. Um, you can go on go on the site and apply to uh, to set up your own TV channel. Yep. Uh, effectively. And the, the the real the real USP for the platform and the vision of the founders, which also was an easy sell to me, is that we're trying to make um, streaming as accessible as possible to anyone uh, with with a, with, a, with a simple mobile phone. Uh, and, th- and that the, so the, that that was going to be my next question because you know again if we go if we go back into ancient times you know 2007 and 8 um, when people tried to live stream you needed a really massive rig and a computer that did encoding and and you know industrial strength cables to the internet like what kind of setup like d- does does a does a team or a league need to be able to be uh, to connect to your system and and to be up and streaming yeah so um, the, the the basic the basic uh, tech that you need, you need a, yeah. a, a mobile phone um, at a minimum. Uh, of yeah. obviously, obviously, some of our partners will will uh, have scale and have multi multi camera type setups. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have a we have a dedicated broadcast app uh, through yeah. which the the stream is captured and a studio uh, functionality within that that can uh, through which you can edit the the uh, content produce the content so you can uh, overlay graphics you can tag highlights goals chances um so there's a kind of media management element to the platform as well okay yep you can share this, the, 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 that clipped or tagged content um to social channels uh scoreboards tickers uh clock um so there's a there's a very much a, a kind of built for football by football feel to the platform, whereas yep. I think uh, uh, there's a lot of streaming platforms out there at the moment. There's none that I've seen that are actually built for football by by people with an, an, a, a very intimate knowledge of, of the football yep. business. Um, so that's really uh, really what we see as as a key part of, of of the. And so with you know with every so where's the. What's the business model of MyCujo? 
Like where, where, where does, what does success look like for you? And then for your rights, you know, for your rights holders, for the clubs and the leagues and stuff that are getting on the platform, you know, what's in it for them? What's the both sides of the equation? Yeah. So, uh, I guess on a basic level, um, the, the, the chance to connect with, with your audience, no matter how small yep. uh, niche they might be, uh, on, on a larger level, um, there is a monetization uh, opportunity. So shared revenue on advertising, we're an ad funded yep. platform. Yep. Um, so shared, shared uh, revenue is, is the, is the ultimate goal that we want to deliver for, for well, effectively for all of our partners. That won't be possible yep. for some obviously uh, on a lower scale, but, uh, but it's very similar to YouTube. You put your videos up and, and you'll, you know, get enough views. You're getting some, uh, getting some funds back. It's, you know, it's a, it's a well-known internet model. Uh, and, but the, the thing is you're a, but the, the more important thing is that you're giving them the platform, but then from a, as you get enough content, then you've you've obviously got options on how you might shape and 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 repackage that content, you know, up, and you know potentially be like people talk that the Netflix of sports, you could be the Netflix of football, and people could pay. Yes, I'm willing to pay five dollars a month to watch this whole smorgasbord of sports. That's potentially where it could go. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's actually the, the, the growth of, growth of possibilities are are, are, are varied, um, and uh, the, there is a I guess there is a real uh, desire within the, the organisation, and already much investment is going in towards creating more of a community platform. Yep, uh, and and this is where we see the the future. Um, the the platform is is built currently for broadcast. Um, it's a window to the world for for the long tail of football. Um, but I think uh, as as we move forward, you will see more and more uh, engagement and, and interaction possibilities on the platform and, and the, the the evolution and development of a of a community. And it's that that engagement aspect that we believe is is crucial to to what the the partners we're bringing on board are looking for. Uh, we believe it's what the football community who are on our platform and, and who could be on a platform are, are, are looking for. And, and yeah, so that's something that, that, that you see uh, more and more from us. Well, I, um, I will, uh, after this interview, I'll, say, I'll make an introduction to the guys at uh, Futsal Oz. I spoke at the Futsal Oz conference last year. Um, they're doing, they're doing really good, good things around, I guess, all the centers they're building. They're having state championships. They're doing a lot of their own, uh, live streaming um, and having a lot of success with it, so I'll make the connection um, and see where, see how my Cujo can can help them uh, get their content out there a little bit further. We really appreciate that, sure. So, I guess the last last question is, you know, when someone's looking at it, and the my futsal guys are the uh, sorry, the futsal guys are the same. What's the counter when they say we'll put it up on Facebook or we'll put it up on? YouTube, because if, at some point that's where you're competing. Is it the is it the football uh, specific functionality and community and audience that's your differentiator? Yeah, yeah, I think you've you've answered answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I occasionally do that. No, that's one step ahead. Uh, no, that's okay. But but that is like that is the piece that is where it is falling because you've got because Facebook is Facebook. It's obviously having I don't know when we'll publish this, but it's having some concerns at the minute with its stock price um, plummeting and some issues around around data and people saying they're deleting it. But uh, that's where you're you're different to say, well, if you want that traditional streaming embedded on your site, that's what we do, um, and you know, give give them that access to that. Yeah, yeah, I think um, the. The USP um, versus a Facebook or a YouTube. Um, clearly, the, the the types of audiences they're attracting on a platform are are currently on a different different level. Um, yeah. What, what we can do uh, is is offer a, a much more contextualised experience for the viewer. So our player is is unique in so far as we have we have the ability. You, you as a partner would have the ability to to uh, create a a dedicated football stream so with with a, with the scoreboard with with a timer with 
yeah. uh, the, the the tagging possibility embedded on your platform on, on your digital platforms uh, or shared on social platforms and or on on our platform uh, where we're getting uh, significant audiences already who are uh, looking for this type of content i think that's something that facebook and youtube are not catering for yeah because they're just catering for that wider yeah market and and yeah. i guess that's where you can as a platform start implementing some of those te- some of the tech that's already out there we spoke to a viv the guys at wsc uh you know ai analyzing highlights and 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 doing automatically clipping and those kind of things that as you get scale you can be rolling them out uh, to everyone straight uh, in in one fast swoop when it's something that you know youtube's never going to do a auto highlight cutting type service because it's got it's such a wide piece yeah yeah exactly yeah. and that's where we 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 feel we can add a lot of value to to uh, leagues and, and, and clubs uh, throughout the across the world really there's so much potential currently untapped um and and we really are talking about a very broad range of of content partners potentially from as i said from the likes of the you know the top confederations like the asian football confederation all, yep. the, way, all the way down to you and i playing on a sunday afternoon um yep. in our local pub team and, and i guess that's where you probably get a sense of of the community idea becomes more and more important mm. uh, where, where this could become um part of your your football life is the central part of your, your digital football identity and life really so this is something that, that you'll see, as I said, more and more um, from our side in the coming months on that, on that aspect. And so that's your charge as marketing director to, to get that word out of what my Koju, Kuju can do, uh, get it into the right people and get that conversation happening around it as a platform? Yeah, yeah, more or less. I think um, maybe in simple terms, my, my, my uh, understanding of my remit here is really to bring in a, a kind of audience orientation to – Yep. We, we, the, the company has done a fantastic job to get on its feet with a, with a sort of minimum viable product um, from a tech perspective, and, and and now we need to think about who we're building it for. I think it goes a bit back to the the whole audience segmentation and understanding piece that we we talked about earlier. Um, my job really is to to start um, bringing their voice into the the platform to make sure we build it uh, for for the audience with the audience. Yeah, because, I mean, you'll have things like because it's a live streaming product, you know, what are the people that watch a full game? Who are they compared to the people that skim across and look for the highlights? They're a different segment. And out of that, products or shows or or highlight shows, like there might be other products that come out of just your analysis of that data. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The opportunities really are are, – are, uh almost infinite um, in terms of where the platform can go and that's what really excited me in coming on board well it's been uh, it's been good uh, good to catch up I wanted to uh, uh, go to the sports gear closing five do you remember the first sports event you ever attended yeah yeah I, I, I do I think uh, my sports life in the early days was very local so I was I was a fan of my local football team um, nothing nothing glamorous but it was uh, uh, it would have been glamorous to you yes it was yeah, as yeah. A <laughs> seven six seven year old boy I used to jump over the wall to at, at the local football team in my town of uh, 5,000 people and that was my football um, life uh, in parallel with being a, a, an aspiring aspiring player at the time um, that's that, that those are my abiding memories and it's funny that I, I come back to the long tail of, of football and that's where it all started yep. for me <laughs> that's good that's good um, you would have attended a few sports events in your time especially with FIFA and multiple world cups and maybe in different parts of the world do you have a favorite uh, food memory at a sports event yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually getting used to the bitter balls from bitter balls from from Holland I was lucky enough to um, attend a match here uh, and they are something special uh, I don't so, think if it, describe them for because I have no idea what you're talking about yeah I'm, so I'm not, what what exactly are they I'm not even sure I know what I'm eating Sean to be honest I, <laughs> I, I, I think they're kind of like fried um, 
fried deep fried bowls with some kind of cheesy starchy okay cool so, like, like, i'm so glad you said cheese and starchy <laughs> like I, I don't know if other listeners are thinking the same thing all i've got is visions of chevy chase in uh, funny farm um for the people that know that uh Google that and the and the and the record that he obtained. I was bit, getting a bit worried. They do sound delicious now. Now that I know what's in them, yeah. Uh, what's the first app you open in the morning? Uh, Feedly, probably on your recommendation. I think uh, was it was it. I think it was you who got me onto Feedly. Would would that be possible? Is that something? No, I've, no? I might have mentioned Feedly. I've used Feedly before. I think other people have mentioned Feedly. Yeah. I'm a I'm a Nuzzle for a news Nuzzle, and I've just started using Refined. Okay, I'll look. Uh, Refine's really good in that it uh, it's a bit the same as Nuzzle, but it uh, it curates creates a whole bunch of lists around topics and people you follow. Um, I'm finding those good. They're not the first app I open in the morning, but they're good news resources. Um, but yeah, I think you're one of the first that that goes to Feedly as opposed to you know, I want to get my news somewhere else. But that's fine. There's no like I said, there's no wrong answers. Um, is there someone that uh, that you follow that you would like to recommend to to the podcast listeners and why you'd recommend them? Yeah, I I, I, quite, I enjoy the comments of Luis Vicente, who who um, I think formerly worked with uh, Man City in Valencia in, in the yep. football world, and now in fact is is uh, doing some work at at, uh, at FIFA. Um, he uh, I, I enjoy his his sometimes in depth. Uh, commentary on on all things sports business and and uh, yeah follow him quite, quite so where 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 are you following him on what what channels linkedin and twitter i find him mostly do you, do you know what his handle is off the top because people oh. are probably rewinding the uh, the podcast to catch his <laughs> name again i don't sean i don't you might that's have- okay so <laughs> we'll get it and we'll we will put it in the show notes great and there'll be a note there's now a note uh, for Jolly to check the show notes and make sure we get the uh, uh, get the uh, correct Twitter handle. Um, last but not least, uh, what social media platform is uh, your MVP? And so normally, what I I'm going to ask it three. Normally, ask it twice. I'm going to ask it three ways. What was the MVP for FIFA? What's it? What's it for my Cujo? And uh, what's it for you personally? Okay, um, me personally, I'm. I'm- I'm kind of gravitating more and more to LinkedIn, and and yep. I don't know why. I just feel, I mean, my, my interest <laughs> picking up sports biz and news. That's my number one social media usage. And, I, I th- and- yeah, I, I've said it before. I think LinkedIn has, like the last two years, they've done a really good job of, I guess, uh, cleaning up and they tweak their algorithm to bubble up better content. Um, I think they've done a better job. Like the feed is actually more useful and we don't have the overall, you know, the, the white noise that Twitter some kind times can be um, and the, the constant changing of what Facebook might be. Um, if, yeah, if you want sports business, LinkedIn's the place to go. I completely agree. Mm, yeah. And, and I think on the FIFA side, I'd probably see Instagram. Um, there was some, some cool stuff being done on the platform by the digital guys, uh, I think the the lifespan of FIFA on Instagram is fairly short currently, but I think that that's the platform to watch, in my opinion. We'll, we'll see. Um, it's well. and that's what every that's a, that's what everyone said over the last eighteen months that the engagement on Insta, both on the feed product and the stories product, because they're two different products, um, are going are going gangbusters. So yeah, I'm not surprised, and and you're also probably starting from a point of it has it didn't have a, a major attention and so as you as your digital team puts more attention into it it gets more momentum yeah yeah i think on the my kuju side um I, i'm going to say slack for very different reasons for very for internal reasons we use slack as an internal yep. community to um uh, to to really share information uh, so it's not uh, from an external perspective but yep. it's highly valuable um to get to know colleagues get to get to know what people are thinking to respond and, and interact quickly with with colleagues are you ge- are you all geographically in the same place or is it across borders across borders yeah most of us are in yeah. Amsterdam and we're still fairly small but but the, there are people in Portugal Brazil Asia um so yeah we, we're we're also this 
dispersed in a way, so there is uh, a, a lot of value to, to to Slack in that respect. That's that's why yeah, that's why it works. That's why the sports biz Slack uh, works. That's where you uh, reached out to me and said, "Yep, let's do that podcast we were talking about." Um, yeah, Slack's amazing, and both of that in, internal comms. I'd be really interested to see if sort of like the way we've done sports biz Slack, if you know that com- if there's that community piece where where Slack fits in that wider community piece, um, you know, their free model means, you know, you lose, you lose the messages, but, you know, does it fit or um, in that wider community piece and whether they're going to play in that space or whether they're going to st- stay in the we're in internal comms uh, tool because there's a lot of people using it the same way I'm using it for sports biz Slack to say, here's a wider community, let's all let them talk. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of Slack. So, uh, before we wrap up, uh, how can people, if they have not already connected with you, how can they find you on the internet? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on uh, LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on on Twitter, David G. Fowler. Um, I'm not really using Facebook anymore. <laughs> uh, um, I'm on a few other social channels, but I think, uh, yeah, Twitter. And, and most of the time you are David G. Fowler. You've done well to go and uh, yeah, I've, I've controlled uh, secure that. identity pretty well. So, uh, yeah. Was there, another, was there another David Fowler out there that uh, you, forced you to use the G that you sort of shake your fist at? No, that was my mum, actually. My mum tells me. <laughs> she, she always reminds me to use my middle initial, so I, I, I kind of stay true to that. <laughs> oh, well, that's very good. It's all about, about the personal brand, but really it comes down to mum <laughs> saying, don't forget your middle initial. It's all about mum. Uh, very good. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good to catch up. Um, hopefully we'll do so in real life at some stage, um, but yes. thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks a lot, Sean. Great to talk to you. Download our Facebook campaigns guide at sportsgeekhq.com slash FB campaigns. Thanks again to David Fowler. That's David G. Fowler, F-O-W-L-E-R. And if you want to catch up on some of the things that he did blog in his time at FIFA, go to davidgfowler.wordpress.com and you'll be able to catch up with him. Um, He's also a member of our Sportsbiz Slack. So if you've got a question, like I did, um, send him a message or... uh, Ask him in the digital channel uh, to and what he thought. Um, and if you want to follow up on either his time at FIFA or on uh, My Cujo TV. Um, just before I wrap up, uh, just going through a few things that we've been doing lately. Um, one has been a data acquisition project, um, helping helping a team understand where they're going to drive new leads for ticketing and season ticket campaigns. Um, and starting to build out and flesh out their, their data acquisition strategy. So very similar to the stuff we spoke about last week with Tanya Galena in, you know, understanding the data um, and, and how you can use different types of campaigns uh, to acquire uh, new customers and, and new and fresh leads. But then it's not just acquiring those leads. It's uh, it's understanding what you're going to do to them, do to them. You don't do something to them, but how are you going to communicate and how are you going to start their their journey in your, uh, in your CRM? So... Yeah, so we're doing a little bit in the in that data acquisition project and sort of helping uh, straighten things up uh, there. So if you if you're having issues around your data and what you do with your data once you get, uh, like especially new data, um, yeah, happy to give happy to have a chat. Uh, just go to sportsgeekhq.com slash phone call. Um, lastly, I just want to give a quick reminder uh, in May. I will be in Queensland with the Queensland Sport and Rec. Um, uh, they've got some uh, a conference in Mackay and Brisbane and Cairns. So if you're in that part of the world, uh, Mackay in on May 4, Brisbane on May 17, and Cairns in on May 31st. Just go to sportsgeekhq.com slash Queensland 2018. That's the link. And um, it'll be, yeah, it'll, it should be good. I'm already looking forward to catching up with a few people who are in the sports biz slack that are in Brisbane that are going to either stop by or we might even have an impromptu meetup. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, if there's enough people, I'll uh, we'll organise a meetup of some sort. Um, but otherwise, we'll uh, see you at the conference. 
Um, for the international listeners, uh, this coming Wednesday is uh, Anzac Day, and uh, so it's a it's a big big day, uh, national day. It's a national holiday. I guess it's, I would probably say it's the closest thing that Australia has to uh, July the fourth, an Independence Day. Um, but it's pretty much looking back at. Uh, and respecting, it's probably close to Veterans Day, but I think from a national importance uh, point of view, it's more like Independence Day. Um, looking back at what our veterans had, had given and the sacrifices they'd made in the wars. So it's a really big, big day in the AFL and the NRL calendar uh, with big games. I'll be there. It's one of my favourite days of the AFL year. I'm going to see uh, my beloved Pies take on the Essendon Bombers. Um, so, yeah, if, you, if you're an international listener and want to see what big day and big events come come through, then check out the AFL and the NRL uh, social feeds to see what happens on on Anzac Day. Um, there'll be, you know, there'll be a full MCG uh, MCG at, at Collingwood versus at Essendon, um, and uh, when the last stand happens, it's it is absolutely uh, spine tingling. As always, uh, please get in touch either via using social media or via email. Uh, until next episode, my name is Sean Callanan and you've been listening to Sports Geek. Join over 1,000 sports business executives in Sports Biz Slack. Go to sportsgeekhq.com slash slack. Please share your fave episodes of Sports Geek on LinkedIn. Be sure to tag Sean Callanan. Go to sportsgeekhq.com for more sports digital marketing resources. Want to chat with Sean? Book a time for a call. Go to sportsgeekhq.com slash phone call.